Okay, so uh, my name is Lance Winslow, and you're probably thinking about starting your own uh, yacht and uh, boat detailing business. Well, if you're going to be cleaning boats and yachts, you're probably thinking you need some equipment for that. And it is true, that can get very costly. However, there are certain things you can do to keep the price down, or you can go all out and uh, just do it first class and spend a bunch of money. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the business planning phase of this. Perhaps you want to start out slow and get, get in gear. Or perhaps you already know that you're going to have significant amount of business because you, you know people at the marina, or you have friends, or you have referrals, or you just noticed there's a lot of big boats there. And uh, they're going to want someone who knows what they're doing, who has some specialized equipment. If you have very nice equipment, it will certainly uh, make you look like you know what you're doing. Uh, and hopefully you do if you're going into business cleaning people's boats because uh, this isn't really a place for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, now then, there's uh, four strategies that, that I, I recommend. And uh, previously, before I had retired in 2001, I did uh, franchise uh, mobile uh, cleaning operations all over the country, mostly boats, airplanes, uh, trucks, and uh, cars. So I know a little bit about this, and uh, different franchisees use different types of, type of equipment depending on where they were. Uh, our franchisees in Texas would go to the lakes, and, and they wouldn't have uh, anything very sophisticated, uh, like the, the people who worked in uh, Newport Beach Harbor or up in Puget, Puget Sound. Um, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, they had unsophisticated equipment uh, in the back of a pickup truck. And, uh, okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I mean, if you're going to be in... Uh, um, in Florida, and you're going to do some of the higher end places that have the big yachts, then you're going to want uh, certain kinds of equipment. is is just going to be mandatory and necessary. Um, but here, here's how you can think of this business: you could rent a dry dock space where you could take the boats out of the water to clean them and and uh, clean the holes real good. Uh, you could do it on the water, and when I mean on the water, the boats are in the, either the slip or you pull up to the slip in a pontoon boat with all your equipment on it, and you parallel park and clean it. Um, or you have a mobile unit, which you leave in the parking lot with long hoses that you stretch out, maybe a mobile detailing rig with a, a lot of uh, hoses with quick disconnects, and they can make it to the end of the, uh, the, uh, the dock. Of course, the more expensive yachts are usually on the ends, and uh, they are the people who will hire you the most, so you're going to need a whole lot of uh, power cord. And then you have to have your generator running way back at the dock where it's unattended, or you need someone to stand by it, and that costs more labor. There's all kinds of things to think about there. Another way to do it is just do it by hand. Uh, a lot of people do this. They'll have uh, maybe a small electric pressure washer, and, they'll, and maybe they're, they're, there's a hose line on the dock. Not all docks have home hose lines, but the nicer ones do at the nicer marinas. Um, and uh, they'll come out just like the cleaning ladies might come into a home. They'll, they'll carry the vacuum cleaner and various items, but mostly it'll, it'll just be in little uh, uh, tote, uh, plastic tote cases, and they'll just carry it along with what they need. Uh, for cleaning the inside of the boat, pretty much you're going to have to have that anyway. Um, now then, let's, let's talk, at some, talk about some of the costs. Uh, you want to keep your costs low when you start, obviously, because you're, you're running a business. You don't know how much business you're going to have. You're thinking you're going to have a lot, every entrepreneur. Uh, always projects uh, awesome uh, performance in their pro formas, and that isn't always the case. Generally, you make about half the amount of money you thought at first, and it takes you usually uh, twice as long to get the business going into a profitable situation than you thought. A lot of people run out of capital, and their businesses fail. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to really think this out. Okay, so if you're going to rent a dry dock space, you're going to need... Um, uh, some liability insurance, or they're not going to rent you the spot. They're going to need to be additionally insured, whoever's leasing it to you or renting it to you. Uh, and you're going to need garage keeper's liability because you're going to be taking boats in and out of the water, and it's really easy to, to screw something up. And uh, that gets expensive. So there's the cost of renting the space and the insurance. And, um, and that, you know, it, it's just something to think about. But it is nice to have a place to lock all your stuff up, uh, have a place to work out. Or maybe you're working at a dry, box, a dry dock facility with uh, painters and uh, sandblasters and other people that are working too, and you can just use one of the spaces as you need to, which is another opportunity. 
uh, you can rent this space for a day or a weekend or whatever. Something to think about. Now, if you're going to do it on the water and you want to get a pontoon boat, uh, I've done that before. Uh, I've also learned things the hard way. Uh, it's really easy to sink one of those things, so you got to be careful when people come through in the wake and you have to launch it somewhere and come back around to where you need to and you got to take it home at night or you got to find a place to park it. And it, it can be a situation. So, uh, and that can cost money too. Now, if, you, if you're going to be in business for a long time, you could uh, buy a pontoon boat that is a pleasure craft and you can um, get the loan for uh, 10 or 20 years and get your payments down to practically nothing. So it's not as costly as you think. You can man mount a plastic water tank, hopefully a low profile tank, right in the center on the bottom. Or you can uh, get a third pontoon mounted underneath and use that for your water storage, uh, line it with some kind of a plastic line or polypropylene works best. Um, so that's something else you can do. So let's say your payments are uh, $230 a month, and you do some and, and, and you get the whole thing all outfitted the way you want, that's good. You're also gonna need some bumper guards and some other things so you don't scratch anyone's boat. And uh, that works out fine. Now the difference is that you're only gonna be cleaning and washing and waxing above the water line if you're on a pontoon boat. And you can't put soap into the water because uh, you know you're you're uh, that's bad for the environment. They're not gonna let you do that. Especially out in California, there there are sticklers on the uh, uh, the regional quality, uh, regional uh, water quality control board, and uh, if you look at 213, 213 or this is at uh, 12, 13, 63 of the California Water Code, you need to look that up and see what you're getting into because there's environmental issues. Um, so if you're cleaning just above the water line, what about the below the water line? Okay, so now you're going to have to get scuba gear, or you're going to have to get some snorkels. You have to go underneath and scrape the bottom, or buy one of those expensive robotic uh, UUVs or AUVs or ROVs. Uh, robotically operated vehicle or uh, uh, autonomous underwater vehicle or underwater uh, unmanned vehicle, they call them different things. But anyway, it would clean the bottom for you and you'd have to, you know, be there with it. Uh, those things don't work as good as you think and they don't work that well when there's a little bit of a current in the um, harbor. Uh, and if you lose one, they're really expensive. Um, and their the technology is just not there where it's reliable as you might think it would be. But I imagine in a few years, and remember, it, uh, I'm doing this uh, this video on uh, the day after New Year's on 2014. So um, that last comment may not be apropos, perhaps in uh, in a few years, uh, you know, say 2016 or 2018 or whatever. Um, they may have these little robotic things to clean underneath for you very easily, and they probably won't cost that much by then. Right now, they're expensive. Um, okay, so there's that. You could get a mobile unit, uh, like I said, uh, and uh, maybe a mobile detailing rig that you find with uh, lots of extra hoses and you do the quick disconnect and go out to the end of the thing. That's, these are the ways you can do it. Um, maybe you can do a combination of that. Maybe you have something on a little trailer that you use uh, that's transportable in some way. Uh, maybe a skid unit on a trailer that you leave at the dry dock and you can also take it around and clean other things. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, there's all kinds of things to wash. So uh, when you're when you're out there at the marina, um, so these are what I want you to think about when you're doing your business plan. Um, if you're going to just have carry-on stuff, you can go in your car or minivan or SUV and and, and or pickup truck and, and just you have a few items that you use to clean the boats. Uh, a lot of people do it that way. Um, a lot of the waxing has got to be done by hand, and the squeegees and the, the, these kind of things are are not uh, big to carry. Um, so you get some little trolley thing where you can tow it to the boat and you uh, work right from that. Um, and, and those work pretty good. So that's one way to do it, um, especially for the interior detailing. That's kind of how it happens. Um, and you can have different kind of tote carriers for uh, uh, your wood treating for teak or your uh, polishing for aluminum for uh, the tuna towers or, or the, the fish towers and, and uh, the railings and all the things that, that, that you need to be cleaning. Uh, the hot water pressure washer does come in handy. If you can get a small one that's maybe like a little steam cleaner type situation where you can clean bilges, uh, there's a lot of money in that too. So these are uh, some of the things you need to think, of, think about in the way of equipment. And you need to do that sooner than later uh, for your business plan because you need to know how much money you're going to need to start out. Um, and and uh, you're going to need to know your capital on how long it's going to take to get the return on investment. And I want you to be thinking there. And uh, that's why I created this video for you. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. I will answer them back when I'm alerted. Or you can send me an email. Lance at carwashguys.com is my email address. You're welcome to send me an email uh, with any questions, and I'll try to answer those. Um, 
Also, if you are writing a business plan, uh, I do have some business plan uh, templates, and I can send you those. And, uh, of course, you can always buy my book, too, where I, I, I go over all this. You always have it. You don't have to keep watching this video over and over. Someone complained about that at the end of the day. Uh, you can just merely uh, buy the ebook on your Kindle or your, uh, your tablet, and that's at uh, uh, the Amazon Kindle website. And it's uh, just look under my name for boat, boat clean, and you'll see it. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, hey, what the hell? Uh, good luck in your business. That's all I can say, okay?